a differential form is what goes inside the integral when you're trying to calculate flux and flow. And um, the beauty of thinking in terms of differential forms is that it avoids the necessity for the Jacobian. You know, what does that mean to a student at the Calculus 3 level? What it means is the differential forms are important because these are the actual formulas that you're gonna like plug the things into in order to get the answer. Vector valued functions are exactly what they sound like. It's a function and the value of the function is a vector. So you plug something in and the output of the function is a vector. Um, if you're solving a problem about work, then your vector valued function is gonna represent force. And if you're solving a problem about flux, uh, then the vector valued function is gonna represent velocity. Both of those things are vectors. Um, and I have here, this is Coulomb's law. It's the force on uh, a positively charged particle by a negatively charged particle. So in this example, this thing right here that I have circled, that's M and that one is N and that one is P. Um, so the thing is you, you can't really like graph these because there is a vector at each point in space. So there's like a lot of vectors here. So um, what you do is you, you just graph some of them, right? So you get an idea for what it looks like. And this is this is Coulomb's law right here. I think this is a really beautiful picture. Um, you know, this is so in Calcplot 3D, you just input a vector field if you ever want to look at the graph of one of these things. Um, and then you can see here, there's the M and the N and the P and this controls how it looks. There's a few common vector valued functions in R2 that we, we like use uh, just like for conceptual purposes. And the first one is going to be this. Uh, you know, these are really simple uh, vector valued functions. So there's the M and there's the N. And I've got the graph here on Calcplot 3D. So that's what it looks like. Um, this is just kind of, you know, the vectors are just like all pushing away here. Um, so sometimes we're going to call this like a, a divergence field. Basically, just everything is just pushing out there from the origin. And the other one is this, uh, this vector valued function here. So in this one, the M is is negative y and the n, I don't want it to be negative x, I want it to be positive x. Okay, and let's have a look at this one. It's kind of beautiful there. You can imagine that if this was the velocity of a velocity of a fluid, then you know if you dropped a little sailboat in there, it would kind of spiral around. Actually, this isn't perfect. I, I don't can you see here how the vectors in the in the middle there are shorter than the vectors are on the outside? Let me let me change this. I want to fix it. I don't want this, I don't want this vector field to have different magnitudes. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn all these vectors into unit vectors. So if I just find the magnitude of this, it's going to be the square root of, of x squared plus y squared. So I'm just going to take this vector valued function and scale it down by the magnitude and then all the vectors will be unit vectors. Okay, so here's the old vector field. You can see how they're different in magnitude and I like it. I think it's more pretty if all the vectors are the same length. So let me update it. So there it is. Now all the vectors are the same length. So in this vector field, all that's happening is rotating, right? None of the vectors are getting longer or shorter. All they're doing is sort of causing you to, to kind of spin around there. Um, so these two vector fields are going to come back later, so I'm just going to give them kind of informal names. This one I'm going to call the pure divergence field, and then this one over here I'm going to call the pure spin field. Now I want to derive the differential form for work. Um, so we, you saw this in the other video where I, uh, I did like flux and flow explained. Um, so this problem is about flow because we're doing work. Um, so in this problem, this is just force times distance. And the issue here is, is that um, the the force not might it might not be like all of the force is going into moving you along the path. Um, so we just need to project the force onto the direction that you're mo moving so that you know the actual amount of force that's pushing the particle forwards. So this is a force and then this is a distance. Um, but this is like a, a, you know, I mean, this is just like an abstract math expression. So I'm just going to start um, plugging in the definition of these things so we can simplify it and get, kind of get like a formula that we can use to get the answer. So I'm starting us down the path. And I'm just putting all the names in for all the pieces. So first F, we're gonna call it M N P. And then remember R is the uh, is the the uh, parametric equations for the path. So I'm gonna call that X and Y and Z. And then um, T, what we're gonna do is the velocity over the magnitude of the velocity. Now look, this is what I'm saying. 
right here at the end, I'm gonna have t times ds. Um, and ds, this is just like a little distance. And so it's gonna be distance is equal to rate times time, okay? And look, can you see what's gonna happen right there at the end? That tds is gonna have a magnitude of velocity in the denominator. And then from the ds, it's gonna have a magnitude of the velocity in the numerator. So that's great. Um, some things are gonna cancel out already. Okay, so even more things are going to cancel. But I'm tr I'm just I'm just looking at this at the end. The the TDS. So we've already seen that those things are going to cancel right there. And this is what I'm saying. Look, look now now V is R prime. So I need to just take the derivative of all of these parametric equations. So I'm just going to have dx dt dy dt dz dt. And then look, there's going to be this dt out here at the end in the ds. It's going to be in the numerator. And then look at all these dt's down here in the denominator. All of those things are going to cancel. So I think you're seeing already that that uh, this differential form for work when I when I start when I start simplifying it out, almost everything is going to cancel. All right, that, that, that's enough, um, you know, dancing around it. Let me write it down. Okay, so I've just I've just plugged it in. What I'm doing here is I'm working out f dot t d s. So here's f. It's m n p. There's t. It's v over magnitude v, and there's d s. So right off the bat, those magnitude v's are going to cancel. Okay, now so all I have left is this this uh, velocity in the numerator. So the velocity is the derivative of position, so I just took that and plugged that right there in for the velocity. Uh, so I got a bunch of dt's here in the denominator and this dt right there in the in the numerator. So they're all going to cancel. That's it. We did it. Um, you know, th this is the differential form for work. You, the, the, all I did here for this last step. Can you see me doing a dot product? You see what I mean? I'm just doing the first coordinates times the first coordinates and just adding them all up. The sum of the products. Um, so one way to think about this formula is that if you were actually like doing an example um, and you were trying to do this, this like definition of f dot t d s, and you actually had like functions in place here, then you would go through this whole process every time. And then every time all these things would just cancel out. So I mean, why why do a bunch of derivatives and, and then have a bunch of things cancel out when it's gonna happen every time, right? Let's just jump straight to this step. Um, so, I mean, I have a, like a formula written down here with m's and dx's and n's and dy's and stuff. And that's, that's kind of crazy looking. So I want to show you that in the context of an example, I'm not going to do like a full example here, but just in the context of an example, this is actually a really easy formula to use. So I just want to plug some things into the differential form. So I just kind of made up arbitrary objects. So here is the uh, vector valued function. So this is the m, and this is the n, and this is the p. And this is the parametric equations of motion. So this is the x, and this is the y, and this is the z. So what I'm trying to do is m dx. So in this problem, m is equal to x squared and x is equal to 5t squared. So in this problem, m is equal to 5t squared squared. All I'm doing is taking the x and plugging it in where the x goes in the m formula. Let me do the rest of them out. If I just plug the rest of them in, let's, let's watch me chase it around. So n is x minus y. So all I did is I took the x coordinate and plugged it in for the x in the formula. And I took the y coordinate and I plugged it in for the y coordinate. Okay. And then p is supposed to be z minus x. So all I did was I took the z and I plugged it in where z goes and I took the x and I plugged it in where x goes. Okay. So, so we've already worked out m, n, 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 p. And now let me just work out uh, uh, dx, dy, and dz. So this logic is very much like what you did when you were doing u subs. So in our problem, x is equal to 5t squared. So if I take the derivative of both sides as a statement about differentials, dx is going to be, I am literally just taking the derivative, move the power out front, subtract one from the power, 10t dt. So you just take the parametric equations, what the x and the y and the z are, and you just differentiate, and that's going to give you dx and dy and dz. Okay, look, look, I'm working it out. Okay, the differential form says m dx. So after you work out all the, the pieces, I'm trying to argue that this is very easy to use. Look, here is m and here is dx. So I am doing m dx. I literally just write m 
dx. Okay, so it is that easy. Now let me just plug in the rest of these pieces. So this example that I cooked up, it, it's really ugly. I mean, this isn't how like an actual like classroom level example would play out. But you know, I just wanted to make it complicated enough so that you could you could chase where all the moving pieces went around. Um, you know, here you can see this is what I worked out for p. And this is what I worked out for dz. And then right here in the formula, it says p dz. And I literally just do p times dz right next to each other. So the the, the uh, point that I'm trying to make here is that differential forms are a giveaway, right? Like, like once you plug things into the differential form, everything else is just calc one. Um, so, so great, differential forms are what you need. Uh, let me do, we've done it here for work. Uh, now I need to do the differential form for flux. In this section, I am deriving the differential forms for line integrals. So flux across a line only makes sense in 2D. If you want to talk about flux in 3D, then you're going to have to do flux through a surface. Um, and I will do that, but just not in this video right now. I mean, we'll get there. Um, but but for right now, we're going to restrict ourselves to a 2D environment. So um, a lot of books kind of uh, run into a, a little bit of a problem here because they've been using capital N as the unit normal vector, but that unit normal vector would always point in the direction of curvature. So a lot of times it would, it would point inward or sometimes like right there it would point outward. And we only want to be talking about the outward normal vector. So we've got like a lot of issues here trying to just like, like what we did with um, uh, the... Uh, the flow differential form. We can't just like plug everything in. I mean, not only do we have this like crazy T over magnitude T, but also we're going to have to worry about whether or not the unit normal vector points into the region or points out to the region. We're, we're trying to only find um, vectors that point out, but, but there is a way out of this. Don't worry. Um, so I've drawn the picture here and uh, the point is uh, instead of like using our differential geometry way to calculate uh, the outward normal vector, we're just going to do a dot, uh, cross product. Can you see that red vector that comes right up out of there? That is K. So that vector is zero, zero, one. Um, so you can see here that there's just a little, a little dot product can get us out of this. So for our normal vector, what we're going to do is... Uh, okay, I've got to do the right-hand rule. So I want the outward normal vector. So I need to do, what am I going to do here? T goes this way. Wait, wait, I need to, oh, okay, here we go. Look, 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 look. Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me pause the video and draw the hand. All right, I'm sorry if the hand looks like it's flipping you the bird. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be that way, but whatever that's that's the way that it that it goes so whatever um anyways you can see from this inappropriate hand picture that we could also get an outward normal vector um by doing t cross k um but that's still not perfect because we need to make sure that n is a unit vector because i'm going to be projecting the force onto this normal vector um but that's not a big deal. Remember that the way that you get uh, magnitudes of cross products is by the sign of the angle between them. So in this calculation, n is just already set up in order to be, it's a unit vector just by its definition. So um, this is it. Let me just work out this cross product and that'll give us the differential form. So there's just a little bit of uh, canceling out here, uh, just like um, just like there was before. So the first thing is I'm gonna take T and replace it with V over magnitude V, and then these magnitudes are gonna cancel. Um, so what I need to do is now uh, V cross K, all right? And then just like last time, V is gonna be dx dt dy dz zero. So then all we have to do is just work out this little cross product right there. I, I think it's not a big deal. Don't, don't forget that it goes plus minus plus. Um, so that's where I'm getting this negative from right there. So, so far I have worked out a V cross K. Now I just need to dot product that with F. So it, and then, you know, once you do that little setup, then it, it comes out really, really straightforwards right here. Um, it, don't forget that these DTs all cancel. So, so there, there we did it. We ended up with 
m dy minus n dx. So that is the differential form for flux. I have kind of a neat way of um, memorizing these. So let me, um, you know, so there we've done it now. We've got the differential form. Let me show you how I memorize them and keep them straight. Okay, this is, this is like really high level, you know, this is graduate level math logic here. So, you know, hopefully you guys can keep up with me. But what I'm saying is, is that for flow, you know, like the M is in the X coordinate and then you match that with the DX. So the like X coordinate matches with the X coordinate. Um, but uh, when you do the flux, you have to you have to switch them, right? The M goes with the dy, and the N goes with the dx. So that the way that I keep this straight is, and I'm not joking, if somebody asks me to solve a flux problem or a flow problem, I remember the differential forms by flow I call matchy matchy, and flux I call switchy switchy. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, but what, what is the, what is the real world takeaway of this? The real world takeaway of this is here is the formulas that you actually use to get the answer. If you're solving a flow problem or a flux problem, how do you actually work out the answer? You use the differential form. Yeah, I just have a few closing comments here. The first thing is there is a lot of different ways to write the uh, definition, of, you know, basically a lot of different ways to express uh, how you calculate work. Um, really the ones to me that are the most important ones are the definition, f dot t. Um, so usually I will call the work the tangential form because of that. And then also the differential form. So basically that's just like, you know, the formula that you actually use in order to get the answer. So it may be worth your time to just go through here and, and look at all these different formulas and see if you can make sense of how they're the same. Um, and then the other thing is, I need to talk about that drawing that was like flipping you off. Um, so that drawing, you know, the hand would be turned over if we parameterized the uh, path going in the other direction, then, then the, he would have to put the middle finger going down. Um, so our setup here, our calculation relied on the fact that um, this, the flux, the, the parameterization of flux was going in the counterclockwise direction. So it can kind of leave you like, well, so what if I wanted to do it clockwise? So it's not a big deal. Um, you know, if you, if you orient the parameterization in the other way, then all that's going to do is, is produce the negative answer right there. So, um, sometimes in order to, uh, in order to drive home the fact that this parameterization has to be that way, what they'll do is they'll put a little circle inside the line integral and all they're trying to communicate with that is that this thing is a closed loop. It doesn't, it's not like just like half of a circle or something. There's no like gap. It goes all the way around. Um, also, just to be clear, in order, to, in order for this to make sense, we couldn't like have the path cross over itself. Um, so that's why they call it, sometimes you'll see it called like a simple, a simple, uh, closed loop. And then in order to keep track of the fact that we did this, uh, in the counterclockwise way, they'll put a little arrow on it like that. So, you know, basically what I'm saying is like, don't be intimidated by these, uh, you know, complicated looking symbols. When you look at something like this or something like this, understand that you're just gonna plug in a bunch of T's and that's it. Then you're just gonna do a calc one problem and it's gonna spit out the answer.